Hello students! Welcome back to our science video. For today's lesson, we will discuss about projectiles launched at an angle. At the end of this video, learners are expected to investigate the relationship between angle of release and the height and range of the projectile, solve word problems involving projectiles launched at an angle. When an object is projected from rest at an upward angle, its initial velocity can be resolved into two components. These two components operate independently of each other. The upward velocity undergoes constant downward acceleration which will result in it rising to a highest point and then falling backwards to the ground. The horizontal motion is constant velocity motion and undergoes no changes due to gravity. The analysis of the motion involves dealing with the two motions independently. Let's use the illustration on the previous slide to explain the values of the numbers present in the table. We will deal with the vertical motion first. The vertical motion is symmetrical. As the object rises to its highest point and then falls back down, it will travel the same distance in each direction and take the same amount of time. This is often hard to accept, but the amount of time the object takes to come to a stop at its highest point is the same amount of time it takes to return to where it was launched from. Similarly, the initial velocity upward will be the same magnitude as the final velocity when it returns to its original height. These are the forces acting on a projectile. Applied force and gravity. Because of gravitational force, a projectile follows a curved path. This curved or parabolic path followed by a projectile is called trajectory. One of the key components of projectile motion and the trajectory that it follows is the initial launch angle. This angle can be anywhere from 0 to 90 degrees. The angle at which the object is launched dictates the range, height, and time of flight it will experience while in projectile motion. Sports trivia, maximum range is achieved if the projectile is fired at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Y max, it is the maximum vertical distance reached by the projectile. It is also called the maximum height. Range, the maximum horizontal distance traveled by a projectile. Projectile, trajectory, Y-max, and range. Components of velocity. Unlike the projectiles horizontally thrown, a projectile launched at an angle have an initial velocity both in the horizontal and vertical components. The magnitude of the initial velocity can be determined using the angle theta where it was projected. This angle is often called angle of elevation or projectile angle. It is the angle of the initial velocity above the horizontal. The initial velocity of the object launched at an angle from the horizontal can be separated into its x and y components. From the right triangle, the basic trigonometric functions are as follows. Sine theta is equal to opposite side of the angle over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent side of the angle over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite side of the angle over adjacent side of the angle. Now, if the sides x, y, and r are replaced by the components of the velocity, then the following quantities can be expressed as sine theta is equal to opposite side of the angle over hypotenuse, where we can have the formula initial velocity along y is equal to initial velocity sine theta. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent side of the angle over hypotenuse. Or the formula will be initial velocity along x is equal to initial velocity cosine theta. 
and tan theta or the angular projection is equal to tan negative 1 initial velocity along y over initial velocity along x. In getting the resultant velocity using the Pythagorean theorem, resultant velocity is equal to square root of final velocity squared along the x component plus final velocity squared along the y component. The horizontal component of a projectile undergoes a constant velocity while its vertical component is similar to a free-falling object. Analysis of projectiles launched at an angle. Along x-axis, the projectile travels at constant velocity, and therefore the object has zero acceleration in the set direction. This constant horizontal velocity is present even if the projectile already reaches its maximum height. Along y-axis, it can be compared to an object thrown straight up in the air. As the projectile goes up, the distance it covers decreases at each time interval. It indicates that the velocity decreases at a uniform rate. Once it reaches its maximum height, it will momentarily stop. The combination of both vertical and horizontal components creates a parabolic path followed by the projectile. Note that the time it takes to cover the horizontal distance is equivalent to the total time the projectile is in the air. Suppose that several projectiles with the same initial velocities were launched at different angles, all of it will follow a parabolic path given that any effect of air resistance is neglected. As the projectile angle increases, the maximum height reached by the projectile also increases. Thus, the projection angle and the maximum height of a projectile have a direct relationship. Another relationship that can be observed from the figure is that complementary angles result in the same horizontal ranges. The range of a projectile fired at an elevation angle of 40 degrees will also be the same if it's fired at 50 degrees. The angles 40 degrees and 50 degrees are called complementary angles because they add up to 90 degrees. Other examples of complementary pairs are 30 and 60, 20 and 70 degrees. The velocity along the horizontal component is constant. Therefore, initial velocity is equal to final velocity along x, or simply v sub x or velocity along the horizontal. Since the velocity is constant along the x component, the object is not accelerating. Hence, acceleration is equal to zero. This particular equation for range can only be used if the height of the projectile where it was released is the same as the height where it landed. Where r represents the range, v sub i is the projectile's initial velocity, theta is the projection angle from the horizontal, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. Along the vertical component, the equations are the same since the object still undergoes pre-fall motion. To apply one of the working equations, let's answer this sample problem. A player kicks a football from the ground at an angle of 15 degrees as it follows a parabolic trajectory. If it was kicked at a speed of 27 meters per second and landed on a level ground, how far did it travel horizontally? To answer the problem, let's follow these steps. Step 1, identify what is required to find in the problem. You are asked to calculate for the range. Step 2, identify the given in the problem. The angle theta from the horizontal, the initial speed and the acceleration due to gravity are all given. Step 3 is to write the working equation. Range is equal to initial velocity squared sine 2 theta over gravity. Then substitute the given values. Range is equal to negative 27 meter per second squared sine 2 times 15 degrees over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. In performing the equation, the final answer will be range is equal to 37.19 meters. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe for more science educational videos by clicking the notification bell.